It's an important time to note that we are, as of today, the 21st of July, no longer on an institute. We are on an expedition. And you've the students come from colleges and high schools areas areas all over the United well States, known. and the scientists come from all over the world. The expedition leader is Dr. Maynard Miller, professor of geology at the University of Idaho. And together, for the next eight weeks, they will live and work on the glacier. David, it's wonderful to have you here. This is one of the world's greatest classrooms for research and for teaching. This is the largest glacier on the Juneau Icefield, the Taku. To study the movement of the glacier's surface, survey stakes are placed at regular intervals across the ice. Here you go, Dave. Survey one, this is survey two. We are at the second flag. It is a purple and orange flag. Over. Roger, roger. 135. Survey one, the height of the stake is 135 centimeters. Over. Uh, survey two, I understand the stake is 135 centimeters tall. Over. That's affirmative. OK, I'm going to shoot now. Stand by. With modern surveying techniques, the surface movement is tracked over the summer months. We've got surveyed. You can move on to the next flag. Over. Okay, great. That's yeah. affirmative. During the eight-week session, the students will see the middle stakes move over 160 feet. The pattern is bowed because of the immense pressure of the glacier's mass down the center of the valley. Under stress or under increasing snowfall in following years, it's like a giant hand up valley that pushes that ice down to, toward the sea. It moves by plastic type of flow and also by sliding on its bed. As the snowpack melts in warmer months, the meltwater makes its way down to the base of the glacier. The water reduces the friction between the ice and the bedrock, and the glacier begins to slide downhill. The other way glaciers move is called internal deformation, and its secret lies deep within the glacier. To examine the snow, the students dig test pits on the ice field. The test pit shows the retained snow from the previous winter melted down and compacted from over 100 feet of snowfall. And density is 555. This is going to get harder to do as we get lower. As the samples go deeper, the snow becomes denser, and the crystals begin to change. Keep rotating. You get all wow. that leochromatic That's color. That's beautiful. Polychromatic. Within a pair of polarizing plates, the crystals of year-old snow show up in bright colors. Like a prism, each crystal refracts a different color of the spectrum, showing the random orientation of the crystals. But as the snow is buried deeper and deeper, refreezing meltwater and the pressure of the snowpack fuses them together into larger and larger crystals, and eventually forms dense blue glacier ice. Under incredible pressure, the ice crystals align themselves along common axes and internally start to fracture and slide, deforming the crystals. This allows the ice to move in a plastic-like flow, the upper layers of the glacier flowing faster than the dense bottom layers, which means something's got to give. Crevasses are very uh, exciting phenomenon to me. The crevasses out in the middle, which are tension or pulling apart crevasses, go straight across, one after another. It's just like pulling a piece of taffy apart. Eventually, it breaks in a vertical cleavage. To explore the depths of a crevasse, we packed up the ice vehicles and headed out across the glacier. The researchers have a healthy respect for crevasses, and I soon found out why. This one was about 70 feet wide and over 100 feet deep. You know, when you go over the edge, it's going to be a little scary because you're going to drop out of sight sort of momentarily. Make sure you have a... <laughs> Only to the people up right, here, right? That you have a, uh, right, that you have a good grip on the rungs of the ladder and kick in your toes until you get over the lip. Once you get down over the lip, it's fine. Got it? I got it. All right. Oh, goes. that is deep. Contrary to myth, crevasses seldom drop more than 125 feet, because below that, the structure of the ice will bend, but it won't break. As we descended into the crevasse, we recorded layers from years of snowfall. 5.05 meters, 
5.05 meters. It's an undulating ice stratum. An undulating ice stratum? This would be 1984. Okay. You're reading this like a book. <laughs> well, it, what this is are the pages yeah. of a book. You see, Terrific. the glaciers have written their own autobiography. Locked in their layers of ice, glaciers have faithfully recorded the world's climatic changes. They show us the advance and retreat of the ice in roughly 90-year cycles. The normal pattern of climatic change tells us we should be in the middle of a cooling period. But the ice field tells a different story. So we're worried that this cooling that we have been forecasting uh, has not been materializing in the last 15 to 10 years. You're seeing a very different trend. We're seeing temperatures rising and snowfall uh, patterns uh, revealed that can only occur from a warming condition. And uh, we're going to be watching this with great interest and dedication in the next few years because this ice field is a magnificent place to monitor these changes to see not only are they real, but to, what it, to how intense they are becoming. Before leaving the ice field, Dr. Miller took me to the business end of the mighty Taku Glacier, to the terminus. Snowflakes that fell at the top of this glacier arrive here as glacier ice 150 years later. On the slopes above, the ice heads sharply downhill, forming ice falls with heavy crevassing. And at its edges, the trees have been brushed aside like toothpicks. David, this is the terminal end of the advancing Taku Glacier, down where excessive melting is taking place. The front is approximately 100 yards from where it was only 240 years ago in an earlier advance. And now it's re-advancing again into these trees, plowing up this huge moraine, and nature's bulldozer action. It's spectacular, too. I mean, these. These trees are just getting plowed over, and the rock is getting tossed right up on top of them. And that's just from the moving glacier? It gives you a sense of the dynamism and the immense power that's involved in this great glacier system. And perfect evidence for movement. Well, <laughs> if you it, can't see it here, you're just not going to see it anywhere. <laughs> well, I've always felt this makes a human being feel very humble, but at the same time sort of powerful, because we can stand here and think about it, talk about it, and observe it. And understand and it. And understand it.